Welcome to Avatar Way of the War. Ah, nice movies for you long, mate. <clears throat> so as usual, we're gonna have the board of much information come out to play, along with the usual fast speaking. I'm also gonna skip over lots of shit in an effort to keep this video short. Let's start. Same shit as the first movie applies with A1 and Navi people and shit. I already made a video about that, so go watch it if you haven't already. Here's a new information you need to know. You don't even have to be alive anymore to make an Avatar body. All you have to do is upload your memories to a fucking USB stick, give them some DNA, I guess, before you die, and they will make an Avatar body and upload those memories into the Avatar body and reincarnate you as a fucking Navi person from your last save point, basically. Next bit of info is that the Earth is dying. What a surprise. Humans want to jump ship come over to Pandora, get rid of all the indigenous people and claim this land as their own. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Also, Mustachan Watukun are they are this planet's version of whales. That's right, they put your mama in this movie. They are very powerful and super smart, even smarter than humans possibly because they have big ass brains and shit. And a long time ago they used to fight a lot, have lots of civil wars, so they all came to the conclusion and agreement of no fighting at all, no matter what. And anybody who engages in the violence gets shunned from the community and outcast for life. They're also deeply emotional creatures and have a super duper like special connection with the reef people. They become soulmates and whatever, bond with each other, blah blah blah. Speaking of these ocean reef navi people, they are are like water builds of the normal Navi people with wide arms, wide legs, wide tail, a shovel dick, and all that type of shit. Evolutionized for them to be better in water and shit. This is their king, he's pretty decent. And this is his wife, the queen, she's stubborn as fuck, pregnant, and has her husband by the balls, sort of. Another important character is a certain Tukun whale that has its own name, but I keep forgetting it. Pretty sure it's some fucked up tribal name like Orgoy. So I'm just gonna call it Randy Orton for reasons you'll see later. He convinced his clan and a bunch of reef people to attack the humans that are overhunting the Tukun, and in doing so, suffered a bunch of casualties. In fact, he's the only survivor. He lost to Finn and is now outcast from all communities because he engaged in violence. Becoming a lone wolf and the only two coons any balls to fight back. Jake and the Tiwi, we know these two, they're fucking king and queen of the forest Navi people who are like the main Navi people. And they have with each other five kids. Well, technically four. Well, technically three. First, Spider, who's the most child that is not their child, because he's the offspring of the dickhead mean army dude from the last movie that got killed. And some other bitch we don't know about, but she gave birth on Pandora and they couldn't send the baby away because they didn't have the pods small enough to send him off, which sounds like mad copium to me, like you're a scientist, you could make some. But whatever, he got raised by the scientists that were allowed to stay, and sort of by Jake and the Tiwi, although the Tiwi Loki hates him for being a human and I guess the offspring of that they can army dude. And although he's human, he does everything that Navi people do. He even fucking puts blue paint on himself. He does blue face. Next, Kiri, the fucking miracle Jesus baby. Cause Grace, a scientist that was being transferred to her Navi body, but got lost inside Ewa because her Wi-Fi connection was terrible or something like that. Her Navi body still alive but unconscious, so they have like a big ass fucking vial and it somehow got pregnant and gave birth to Kiri and they adopted her and she's like super in touch with Ewa. She can feel a heartbeat and loves to discover and look at her creations and stuff like that. Nexus boy won the actual first result of Jake and Natiri having sex. I don't remember his name and I don't care. He follows orders and he's an all-around good boy. Boy 2, also their full boy. Also, I don't remember his name, so I'm gonna call him Jackass because he is a jackass because he likes to be reckless and not follow orders and be stupid. But still wants to make his dad proud. And the next child is a little girl called Took, which is an easy enough name, but she's mostly irrelevant and useless. She's just another bitch they have to save and worry about. Now the last character I'm gonna point out is the army dude marine guy from last movie that died who got resurrected into an avatar body from his old save point memories. And the one thing he remembers the most is that he wants to kill Jake Sully and some other things, but mainly that. The movie begins with Jake narrating some of the stuff I just said, and he also says this about the conception of Kiri. Born of Grace's avatar, daughter whose conception was a total mystery. Mystery my ass, dude. Let's get real here. Someone snuck in and fucked that body. Stop playing dumb. Moving on. They observe the humans landing on Pandora again for colonization round two. Then a year later, Marine dude wakes up in space in his avatar body with the rest of his super dead team also resurrected as aviation tards. He gets briefed by his old dead self on how much he hates Jake. The humans have reestablished a base on Pandora. The Navi people attack a bunch of their trains and stuff and loot their weapons. The kids hang out with the scientists they like inside their habitat and they can breathe human air normally for a little bit, but they have to take breaths of their own air intermittently, which is why they have masks on inside the human habitats. Question, if Ewa did impregnate Grace's avatar body like the movies insinuating, then that explains how Kiri is so connected with Ewa, but that also means that Ewa is a dude. Isn't Ewa a she? The great mother and all? Whatever. Let's get back to the evil human base. Old, now very blue marine meets the new army woman in charge of this planet who is beating the shit out of this bag in a stick figure exosuit. Explains to him over some coffee that the new mission they have is to prepare this planet for the arrival of more humans and shit. Wait a minute, is she holding that mug using the exosuit hands? If her movements are translated one to one onto the exosuit, she should not be able to do this unless it's a weird override, she would have to shove her arm into her own body to achieve this. You understand what I mean? Screw it, doesn't matter. To achieve their goal, they must neutralize the existing threat that is the Navi people and kill their dealer who is Jake. But whenever they get any close to where they believe he is in the magnetic Hellloya mountains, nature attacks them because they can smell the gay on them and, you know, they smell a foreign object that they're humans and they're not welcome or whatever, so they attack them. But she believes that since blue team is Navi avatar stuff, they will blend in and not be attacked by nature. So they're gonna go test that out by dropping them into a forest and messing around a bit. They drop them off into the part of the forest where the marine dude got killed in human form and encounter some wildlife and the theorists confirm they leave him alone. Although they shouldn't be because I distinctly remember Jake getting attacked by six like a dog and a fucking rhino creature last movie. So this is mad cow shit here, but who cares? All the kids except for boy one also happen to be messing around nearby in the forest. Kiri is either having a seizure or super bonding with nature slash Ewa, can't really tell. But they wake her up and see the blue marines investigating the final battle arena of Jake and blue marine when he was alive as a human and pull the last thought off the mech he died and to see how he died. So the kids report back to their father and tell him what they see. He tells them to fall back while he comes over with his wife and boy one. But while they leave, the blue marines spot them and trap them. Call for an extract chopper to take these kids back. It's 
high value prisoners and they know that they're high value prisoners because usually Mali people have four fingers but some of these kids have five fingers which means they're mixed between mutts that belong to Jake. Blue Marine also recognizes that Spider is his kid, watches back the vault of how he dies and crushes his old human skull which is hard as fuck, not gonna lie. The sun sets or eclipses behind another planet which is pretty much the same deal for them. Jake, Titi, and Boy One arrive to save their family, engage in stealth combat, then loud combat, mustard gas is released, lots of the Blue Marines die, all the kids escape except for Spider, the weak peasant humanoid child who trips and falls back into the grasp of the Blue Marine. <coughs> right as the distraction helicopter comes and they take him away. Why does Spider not have his own avatar body? He really wants to be Navi, you have the technology and I'm pretty sure you can find the resources to make him one on this planet, so why the hell not? Are we waiting until he's older? Does he have to be of legal drinking age to do so? Whatever, carries super depressor espresso over him getting taken away because they sort of had a thing with each other. Jake and Natir realize that asshole Marine is back from the dead in bigger, badder, bluer, stronger aviation retard form and the humans are probably going to squeeze Spider for any information about them, so back at the stronghold they discuss opciones. Jake's like, we gotta leave to protect our family, also if we stay here the clan is not safe. And Natir is like, no, I promised my father I'd protect the people. Woman, did you not hear what I just said? If the people harbor us, they will die. We gotta leave to protect them and our family. Fine. He wants to fly out to sea and seek asylum with the reef people. So your plan is to get harbored by other people so they die instead. Got it. He abdicates his throne to a wise dude worthy of replacing him, then takes his family to ride the dragons out to sea and live with the reef people in unknown territory for humans at least, I believe. They fly through the night and next day they make it over to the main or like capital clan of the sea people and as soon as they land, racism. <laughs> They get made fun of by the Reef people for looking different than them. Then the Reef King comes and he treats them with the respect that they deserve because he knows who Jake is. The blue or blue people ask for Uturu, which I think means asylum. But then Queen of the Fish people comes along like, they ain't even true Navi, they're five-fingered f- <laughs> My husband was Turuk Makto. Yeah, was. Past tense, bitch. His pronouns are was, were, has been. You're washed up, literally. Uturu has been asked. Uturu these nuts, ho. Hey, 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 women, am I right, King? Uh, I can't make that joke right now, Jake. She's pregnant as fuck, she's gonna cut my balls off. Reef King does not want to bring this war over here, but Jake promises that he's done with war and he just wants to keep his family safe. So Uturu is granted and they begin teaching these forest Navi people the ways of the reef Navi people so they don't suffer the shame of being retarded. And so begin a bunch of scenes where they learn the way of the Wu'a. The kids go for some of the king's children, but they have to keep surfacing because they can't hold their breath for too long. So the reef kids teach them how to slow down their heartbeat so they can hold their breath for longer. A task that is very hard for Jackass kid to do because he's too busy hiding the massive boner he has for reef king's daughter. By the way, Kiri didn't surface with her siblings and I hypothesize that's because she was too busy chilling and looking at the beautiful creatures of Awa and stuff, making her naturally calm and naturally slowing her heartbeat down. So she doesn't use too much air. In fact, a lot of things come very natural to her, unlike for them, they have to like struggle with connecting to the quad fin sea dolphins learning asl which stands for aquatic sea language not h sex location f's in the chat for omegle not her though she vibing with awa water bending fish and shit connects to everything super easy super fast she got the fast pass to everything baby meanwhile jake is learning something a little bit more advanced learning to ride this fish that has a really long mouth and fins it can use as wings temporarily above the water to glide around a bit and the tiwi is probably making fucking nets somewhere or some shit they never show learning anything also we learned that connecting to these underwater butterfly creatures allows you to breathe underwater which obviously means that this creature is going to come in clutch later in the very important scene in this movie because it's very obviously a plot armor device thing but what really annoys me is that they don't use this cheat code creature way more than they already fucking do. Like, why don't these aquatic giraffe f humanoids have a flock of them that they breed next to their houses for ease of access and use them like all the time? It's too OP not to use that way. Is there something stopping them? Do the creatures get tired? Are they too hard to breed nearby? Why isn't this thing used more? Doesn't matter. Some time passes, Kiri staring at some sand in the zone with Ewa again, I guess. Beef King's kid comes along with his friends and makes fun of her for staring at the sand and having one extra finger, so her brothers come along to defend her. They get insulted as well and decide to be the bigger giraffe people and walk away, but then Jackass has another idea and decides to escalate this conflict into a physical one, like a dumbass. Boy one joins in on the fight because he's a good brother. They all get in trouble with adults and Jake forces his boys to apologize to the reef prince who tells Jackass that it's fine, it's all water under the bitch. They're all good now that he should come along and fish with them beyond the reef where he's not allowed and he states that he's not allowed so reef prince is like alright pussy out then but Jackass is like mama didn't raise no pussy I'm coming along that's more like it. Goes along to fish beyond the reef falling for their very obvious trap to prank him. I just didn't know that prank involved getting him killed because they went fishing in a spot where a shark frequents these waters, the Pandoran version of a shark at least and they leave him while he shoots a fish and I'm guessing the blood from the fish attracts the shark it jumps out and attacks him and scares away his dolphin. He's forced to swim for his life underwater hiding corals away from the shark and although he can hold his breath for longer now he can't hold it forever so he has to surface for another breath but while doing that the shark shows up and he prepares to make his final stand and die but then I don't know where Randy Orton shows up spears the fucking shark into a wall kills him the fight however didn't allow him to surface and he fell unconscious on the water but then Randy Orton surfaced him up there and saved his life to return the favor Jackass unhooked the harpoon from one of his fins they sort of communicate the kid doesn't really understand it but they become friends swim around a bit and play together back at their ocean home boy one finds out what reef prince did tells on him but Jackass boy was on his way home already Randy Orton dropped him off and Reef King is about to punish his boy for being an asshole, but then Jackass Boy takes the blame for going out there, telling them that it was his idea to show Reef Prince that they're cool and gain respect and whatnot. So the next day, Jackass tells his newfound friends and his siblings what happened with the shark and the whale, and they're like, "Wow, that's amazing." Then he describes his too cool whale, and they're like, "Oh my god, that's horrible!" And tell him that he's that violent outcast whale, and he's like, "No, you're wrong. There's no way. He's not like that, bro. Trust us. That too cool is evil. Shut up, fish fingers. He's not." And he goes off to holla at his homie Randy and asks him about his past, but Randy tells him that it's too painful to talk about, and the kid actually understands that. Although yesterday he was like. 
buddy. I have no idea what you just said. It's been a day, dude, and now you're fluent in whale. Fuck off. You might be blue, but you ain't Dory. <laughs> anyway, they hang out a bit more while his siblings go off with the reef kids to see their spirit tree, which is awfully located underwater. Horrible placement, because that means you can only connect it for as long as you can hold your breath. Regardless, they go down there and connect their Ethernet cables. Kiwi connects hers, and she sees her mom in many forms down there and asks her why she's different, what AO wants from her, and who her dad is. But she doesn't get an answer because a background steam update started and dropped her ping, causing her to get a seizure underwater. And they rush her back to the village, call over Jake's science buddies to see what's wrong with her, wake her up from the coma or whatever. But they're kind of useless and can't help. So Reef Queen comes over with her tribal healing shit, like, everybody out! Make room for my essential oils. She does a thing with a science fucks, tell Jake that if she sees it underwater again, she could die. The essential oils and neck blowing do their thing. She wakes up crying and screaming, kind of like this. Now enough of them, let's go back to the evil humans and the blue marines who are trying to extract whatever information they can from the spider using a painful MRI projection thing, but he doesn't budge at all. So blue marine c now avatar guy. I have to find a better name for this guy. Blue Marine tries the personal angle with him. Like, look, technically I'm not your father. You and me, we're nothing to each other, but I kind of am. So how about you just come right along with us in our patrols? It's better than being handed back to those bitches and getting tortured. Kid agrees, they fly over to the forest, and he says this. Hey, listen up. The excel is going to ground. How in the name of the floppiest of discs does he know this? You can't get anyone near his old stronghold to verify this, and he didn't see him leave or else he would have known where he went. Are you just assuming this because you're not seeing him in any attacks anymore? Maybe he still is doing attacks, but he's just disguised. Whatever, I don't care. To find them, they decide to go full Navi. They talk Navi, walk Navi, fight Navi, even ride Navi. So they go and get their own dragons with the help slash guidance of Spider who's enjoying this way too much, in my opinion, for still being on the Navi side of things. Then they get a hit on a rogue gunship that flew out to sea. It was a scientist gunship that went to help Kiri and they narrowed down their landing site to this big group of islands. The human marine slug gives permission for the blue marine to commandeer a Tuku hunting convoy with a massive ship to go over there, track down Jake and kill him because he really believes that he's there. Back with the Navi Reef people, they're celebrating the return of a pot of Tukun, which is like a herd of Tukun coming back from migration. Everybody has a soul sister or brother that they bond with from the Tukun whales. They share stories, they share their lives when they come back. They share these stories and reconnect, swim around and recreate a picture from that one popular music album. Jackass sees that and goes over to Randy to ask him again about his past. This time he opens up to him, literally, he opens his big fat gaper, invites him in to go connect his ethernet cable that is at the back of his throat. Once again, horrible placement for that. Actually, overall, maybe that is good placement because that means the most vulnerable part of the whale is protected. It's just bad placement for this specific scenario. But anyway, a Bluetooth connection is established and the kid sees the memories of Randy or now the humans killed his mom and he tried to kill the humans, but he failed and got everyone else killed. Blah blah blah, I already explained this. His brother and the reef kids were spying on him from afar and see all this happen. They report this back to the reef king who gets really mad that the kid connected his Bluetooth device to the outcast and modeled with him, telling him that no matter how justified he's still a killer and a bad, bad whale. Kid disagrees and his father takes him away like that's enough. Then Reef Princess goes to Jackass Boy to try and comfort him and he explains what he saw from Randy Orton and she's like, let's go tell my dad he'll understand and the kid's like, no, he won't. He hates me. Everyone here hates me. No, I don't hate you. Boom. Sex. I mean, girlfriend. What am I trying to get out of here? I don't know. Moving on. Back to the Blue Marine for a quick second. They started searching for Jake on nearby islands, terrorizing the Navi people there for any information they can give him about Jake's location, forcing Spider to translate for them against his will. But they're a tough lot and didn't give up any information about him. At the behest of the Reef King, who tells this news to Jake and Natiwi after he gets the news immediately, they go back to their tent with Natiwi cutting food, and she goes, We must hunt this demon, trap him, kill him. Few things about this. First off, bitch, have you not made the connection yet? They bought him back from the dead. Every time you kill him, they'll just respawn him. This is not a solution, you fucking idiot. You'd have to go delete the respawn point, which I'm pretty sure you can't do. Second, why is she cutting with the curved part faced upwards? That's super dumb, I feel like. Third, I probably said this before, but fuck. It, I'm gonna say it as many times as I need to. Curl your fingers or fucking lose them, salut. Anyway, Jake's like, we can't do that because that's what he wants. He wants to lure us out and kill us. Now back to the dickhead marine after realizing that casual terrorism ain't cooking these geese. And the Aussie ship captain going, mate, we gotta make some fucking money, eh? Telling him he wants to hunt Tukun because he got quotas to meet. A bean dude agrees only if they start hunting nearby these islands because he wants to trigger reaction from these people who are super duper attached to the Tukun whales. He wants to trigger one specific reaction that is for Jake to come out. And although ship dude doesn't want to do that, they oblige and roll out their fishing gear. Now here's a shortened version of the Tukun hunting process. All you gotta know is they hit one of the Tukun with a tracker from a helicopter. They force them out to the surface. Surface, then they isolate one from their pod using technology, then keep him at the surface using balloons that slow him down. Then they hit him with an explosive tipped harpoon for an explosive cop shot from below where they have gaps in the armor because on top they're super duper armored and keep dragging him back with the tugboat while the thing bleeds out and dies. So while they do all that and hunt down one Tukun, the Marine asks if he ever saw one fight back, and the captain goes, nah, I've never seen him lift a fin. Okay, but what about that whole Randy Orton story where you've convinced his pot to fight back? You must know about that, right? Whatever. They get him onto the boat, go into its mouth to drill into its brain and extract the only thing they want from it, which is a liter max of this gel like piss liquid that stops human aging completely. I feel like this is another who slash how the fuck did you find out that you can milk a cow scenario. You know what I mean? Like were you looking for this age stopping serum? Did they know its chemical composition and kill then test the shit ton of animals and the liquid inside of them till they found what they wanted? I just don't feel like this is some shit you stumble onto, you feel me? Anyway, they usually drop the bags to take the whale and get rid of it, but the marine wants to keep the bags on this time because he wants to show the reef people who've done it and anger them more. 
which works. The Reef people go out to see this tragedy and it turns out that they killed the Reef Queen's spare sister. They used to sync up their menstrual cycles and shit, so she gets really sad about that. And they blame Jake for all this because the war he promised would not come to them has now arrived. So he tells them to warn the Takoon if they get hit by one of these trackers, he'll come out personally and disable it. Since Randy Orton is outcast, he has no one to tell him this information, so Jackass takes it upon himself to do that. His siblings and the Reef kids try to stop him, but they are unable to, and he arrives at Randy Orton, who has already had a tracker implanted into his back while the evil human ship is rounding the corner. The other kids arrive and they all start trying to yank it out of his body. Jackass contacts his father and tells him what's going down. Jake relays this information to the Reef King and tells him that all their children are in trouble, so he mobilizes all his forces. Even pregnant as <laughs> Reef Queen takes up arms to join in, which is unwise but badass nevertheless. Woman's got guts, I tell you. Even Marine sees the kids trying to rip out the tracker and recognizes them as Jake's kids. They successfully take it out, but Marine sends out dildo subs and crab subs to go fetch the kids and bring them back to the ship. A wild goose chase happens on the water and they eventually trap three of them and bring them back. Jackass kid being one of them, they cuff them all to a rail. Jake arrives with an army of Reef people, but stops because he sees his kids is being held hostage and Marine dude takes the communication device off his child and talks to Jake telling him that he either gives himself up or he kills his son. So Jake agrees and starts waddling over there slowly with his fish but what no one knows is that his storm is brewing underneath in the depths because Randy sees that a gun is being pointed at Jackass's head and starts going mental with rage kicking up sand and shit and finally goes super speed in the water and jumps out RKO's the boat. Jake and the Reef people take this as a sign to start attacking. A massive battle ensues that I'm mostly gonna skip over, but here are the highlights of it. Randy bounces a harpoon off his dome and jumps back into the water, outsmarts the evil humans twice and kills the cabin. The sea people fight hard. Natiri hits headshot after headshot on their choppers. Kiri connects to Ewa and uses her to destroy a sub. Eventually, Spider sees a boat fly up and obstruct the propellers of the big ship, so he pushes full speed ahead on the throttle and destroys it with a fire extinguisher so it can't be pulled back. They hit some rocks in shallow water, cast some air, fall back down. The ship gets wrecked and starts sinking. Right as Boy One shows up to save the other kids, him and Jackass then go to save Spider. They successfully find him. And do that, make the great escape and dive in the water, but in doing so, Boy One gets shot. They bring him over to a rock where he bleeds out and dies, surrounded by his whole family. Well, most of his family, because asshole Blue Marine got a hold of Jake's two girls and cuffed them to the sinking ship. He's in his ear telling him that, like, nah, 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 got your kids, eh? and gives him the same deals before. Give yourself up and I'll show your kids. Jake tells his wife to stop crying over her dead son. Get over yourself, we can make another one. But he has our daughters now, we gotta go get him. Spider tells him he knows where they are, so he takes Spider along with him to show him the way. And I'm pretty sure Spider does not know where they are, he's just guessing because he did not see them while escaping, or else he would have told Boy One and Jackass and they would have tried to save their sisters as well. So him knowing where they are is kind of bullshit, but whatever. Jake tells Jackass to stay, Natiri flies over, and him and Spider approach very slowly, inspect the situation, then he decides to make a big distraction explosion. Him and Natiri start taking out the baddies one by one. Eventually, everybody runs out of ammo except for Natiri because she has that recyclable shit, you feel me? Spider hides from her because she got that crazy look in her eyes. Jake finds Took, the little girl, alone and frees her. Then he finds Kiri with a knife to her throat, courtesy of Asshole Marine. So Natiri shows up doing the same thing to his kid Spider, and they play a little game of chicken with the killing of these children. Marine gives up first and hands over the kids. They start leaving, but he's like, You leave now and I'll keep coming, I'll kill your whole family. You'll have to kill me now, Jake. Say less. They engage in Mortal Kombat while Leaky Fuel catches fire around the family and they are forced to swim back to the ship. They could have swam under the fire. I don't know why they didn't do that. Most of them can hold their breath for really long. Plus, they could hail a fucking dolphin to swim by and take them. Going back to the ship right now is absolutely insane, but whatever. Took gets flushed down this toilet that is this open hatch with water flooding into it, and Natiri jumps in after her. They all get split up into three groups. The Mortal Kombat group that is fighting each other to death while the ship is flooding and flipping over. The mother-daughter group desperately opening doors trying to find a way out. And the human Navi lover sandwich of Spider and Kiri climbing around and over the sinking ship, doing a Titanic. Eventually the ship goes fully upside down, submerged into the water. Mom group gets trapped and finds an air pocket to breathe in and so does the combat wombat group but they continue fighting anyway and Jake chokes the marina underwater then can't find the air pocket again and starts to pass out but Jackass kid comes to his rescue lifts him up into an air pocket and starts giving him a crash course on breathing techniques and slow down his heart rate so he can hold his breath for longer because the way out was pretty long see he disobeyed his dad's orders and came anyway on his dolphin found spider and kiri they told him that mom and dad are down there so they dove down with him in search for him spider and him when looking for mom and dad while kiri stayed back because she found some of those cheat code give you breath on the water creatures and hooked up to one start doing feng shui yoga with Awa, controlling these glow in the dark fish. She couldn't have given her brother one of these creatures to help out her father. What a f***ing selfish retard. Also, Jake did not already know how to hold his breath for longer underwater. Isn't that fish person 101? Doesn't matter. The glow in the dark fish she start leading Kiri over to her mom and sis like a GTA waypoint. She gives Natiri the breathing butterfly fish and they make it out of there while Jackass simultaneously is leading Jake out. Randy helps them to do the last stretch up to the surface while Spider's doing the same thing with Dickhead Blue Marine because on his search for Jake, he accidentally found him squirming around at the bottom, unconscious, and decided to reluctantly save his sort of still father. They make it to the surface. He lives, although in my opinion, he should have died or at least had some form of brain damage because as far as I can tell he spent by far the most amount of time unconscious underwater but I don't know anything about Navi anatomy maybe they're built better to survive this type of stuff so whatever his dragon comes over and dude tells Spider to come with him but Spider's like hell nah and jumps into the water to swim away the dude flies away in retreat Spider makes it to the rock that boy one died on where the whole family is and he does not tell him that he saved their arch enemy's life honestly it wouldn't have made a difference if he saved him or not because they would have just fucking respawned a new one of him still retarded though but whatever they hold a funeral for boy one and stick him to the ground next to the holy tree of the reef people his body gets absorbed by Ewa and Jake tells the reef king that he'll get out of their hair and never find somewhere else to go and stay but reef king's like ain't no way cabron your son lies with our ancestors you're one of us now for some reason he's latino in my